Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 21 of the Wool Needles Hands podcast. My name is Taylor, and I am going to be your host. This is a podcast primarily about knitting, but we do get up to other fiber-related topics from time to time, including now, which I'm really excited to say, crochet. We'll talk about more of that later. I am coming to you from Henderson, Nevada. That's where I'm from and where I live with my husband, Brandon, our three-year-old son, Angus, our big fat house cat, Oscar, who at this very moment is sitting right in front of me snoozing, and soon to be our newest little member of the family who is expected on March 29th. He is going to be named Ronan, and we're really excited to welcome him into our family, and I'm getting used to saying the name. I really love the name, but it's uh, definitely getting uh, used to having it roll off my tongue as an interesting experience, but we're really excited about that as well. If you're a returning viewer and subscriber, thank you so much for coming back time and time again to check out the show. If you are a new viewer and subscriber, thank you so much for checking out my little corner of YouTube. Please make sure if you haven't done it already to hit the thumbs up and then subscribe to the channel. It not only brings a smile to my face, but it actually really does a lot to help promote the channel and help it to grow, which is really, really important to me. And that's what keeps this whole thing moving. You, the viewers who hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, you keep the whole ball rolling and I really, really appreciate it. So don't forget to subscribe. You can find me on Instagram. I am at at wool needles hands. I am also on Instagram at fiber for dot the dot people. That is the Instagram account linked to my hand dyed yarn business, Fiber for the People. You can also find my online shop at fiberforthepeopleyarn.com. We will be having a shop update this Friday, February 16th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So definitely head over to the shop, sign up for the newsletter so that you can keep up to date on all the good things coming your way for each and every shop update, plus promos that I add into the newsletters, especially for newsletter subscribers. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can do that at woolneedleshands at gmail.com. That is my email account linked to the podcast. I keep all of my podcast related uh, correspondences in that email. So if you have any questions regarding the podcast, or you just want to get in touch, email me on woolneedleshands at gmail.com. There's also a Ravelry group for the podcast. You can head over to Ravelry, go to the groups tab, type in woolneedleshands, a knitting podcast, join the group over there. We are nearly a thousand strong, if not just over a thousand. We have lots of fun stuff going on over there. A really great year-long knit-along going on right now, which I'll talk about in just a little bit, plus a few other threads that are really interesting to get involved in right now. So make sure that you join the Ravelry group and get involved in the conversation over there. You can also get in touch with me via Ravelry if you have questions or anything like that. That's another really great way to get in touch with me. The only way I would recommend to avoid um, getting in touch with me if you have a pressing question um, is through Instagram. Instagram direct messaging is kind of finicky. Um, if I don't already have a connection with you on Instagram, it doesn't notify me that there's a message waiting for me. So I just have to happen to be checking my Instagram direct messages before I actually see that. So if you have anything pressing um, that you really need an answer to, especially if it's regarding Fiber for the People yarn, please don't use Instagram to contact me. Use my email that either is linked to the podcast or you can use the email linked to my Fiber for the People yarn business, which is Fiber for the People contact at gmail.com. You can use that or you can go through Ravelry. Those are the best bets when it comes to contacting me directly and getting a response quickly. And it's really important to me that I can get in touch with you quickly, respond to any questions that you may have quickly. Um, and so anything that might promote a delay in that would be a problem. So please use the email addresses or Ravelry to get in touch. I'm super excited to be here again for episode 21. There's a lot of things to chat about. I have some really great things to share with you guys. I have some people from our fiber community that are going to be sharing some things with us. So it's gonna be a great show full of lots of fun content. So stick around. We have a knit along going on right now that is a year long knit along and I'm so excited about this. It's the only knit along going on at the moment. It is the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Cal and you can actually use the hashtag on Instagram, hashtag WNH Year of Hats Cal 2018 and that is linked to our year long knit along going on and this is pretty much a knit along where you knit a different hat every month. If you go over to the Ravelry thread for this particular knit along, the chatter thread specifically, I lay out the entire outline for how this knit along works. So definitely check that out if you're interested in joining. 
or you can check out a couple episodes ago. Um, I want to say it's episode 19 where I introduced this knit along um, in person. So you can check that out if you want some information that way. But definitely if you're interested in knitting hats, please get involved. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have really active chatter threads going on. Lots of great submissions. I'm so excited to share them with you guys. So that's what's going on for knit alongs right now. I am going to announce a winner for the January hat portion of the knit along. Then I'm going to show you guys some of the great finished objects that came out of the January portion of the knit along. Then we're going to move on to the February portion, which is going on right now. This is where we are working towards knitting a hat for a member of the opposite sex. Somebody, if you are a lady, a man, if you're a man, a lady, or however you want to interpret that, that's what we're doing right now. I am knitting a hat for my husband. There's lots of people knitting hats for their significant others. Um, that's what's going on right now. So I'll show you guys some of the things that are going on in the finished object thread for the February portion of the hat cowl in just a minute. But like I said, first, let's announce the winner for the January portion of the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Knit Along 2018. I have been so fortunate to have so many amazing, talented makers contact me with interest in donating prizes for this year-long knit along. So I am incredibly grateful to all of you who have donated prizes. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It's just so amazing to see all of the beautiful things that are being crafted out there. I love it so much. The makers in this community are incredible. So I'm really, really excited to share with you guys over the course of the next several months, these prizes that have been donated to the show. This prize that I'm going to share with you was donated by the lovely Wendy at By the Bay Yarn Company. You can find her on Instagram at By the Bay Yarn Co. And they are a relatively new hand dyed yarn company, if I'm not mistaken, but she dyes up some really beautiful yarn with the help of her daughter. And so I'm really excited to share this with you guys as the prize for the January portion of the hat knit along. So here is Winterberry by By the Bay Yarn Company. It's a beautiful kind of mauve and raspberry colorway, really soft and vintagey. I love it so much. This is on their 100% Superwash Merino single ply base. It's 362 yards, 100 grams. It's really very, very beautiful. This is the label for By the Bay Yarn Company. I love it so much. So thank you so much, Wendy. And I also am going to be offering with this skein of yarn, a set of stitch markers by the lovely Tracy, who is frankly um, on Etsy. They're really, really precious. They look like little neckties with fish etched into them. They're really very sweet, but this is by frankly, which is Tracy Utley on Etsy. Um, she makes project bags and stitch markers. And in fact, I have a project bag that I'm going to share in just a moment for the February portion of the knit along that is by Tracy and they're beautiful. But this is going to be included in the prize for the January portion of the hat knit along. So you're going to get a skein of yarn by By the Bay Yarn Company and a set of stitch markers by Frankly, which is Tracy Utley's Etsy business. And they're just adorable. So without further ado, the winner is Kate, who is at Crystal Rain on Ravelry. She knit the sort of Veronica hat. So here it is. You can see it here. It's beautiful. Congratulations, Kate. Thank you so much for participating in this knit along. Everybody who participated participated in the January portion of the knit along. Thank you so much. Your pom pom hats were beautiful as you're going to see in just a moment. I really, really appreciate it. It was so much fun, the kickoff month for this knit along. But Kate, get in touch with me if you can. I will try to get in touch with you as soon as I can, but contact me at woolneedleshands at gmail.com or you can contact me directly on Ravelry. Let me know that you've won so that I can get your prize out to you as soon as possible. So before we move on to the February portion of the knit along, let's go ahead and take a look at some, not all, because there are so many submissions. In prior knit alongs, I was able to show almost all the submissions that were coming through in the finished object thread. But unfortunately, I can't show all of them here because there are so many. So I'm just going to show a small collection of finished objects from the January portion of the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Knit Along 2018. So check it out. <laughs>
absolutely gorgeous hats. I love every single one of them. You guys are so creative. There's all from crochet to knit. I think there might've even been one that was loom knit. I can't remember, but they're beautiful. So thank you guys so much. Let's go ahead and move on to the February portion of the hat knit along. And I wanna introduce to you the prize for this month. And then we'll talk about um, some of the finished objects that are in the threads right now. So as a prize for the February portion of the knit along, I am going to be including by Frankly, which is Tracy Utley, who is the um, one who designed the little stitch markers for the January prize. This is the business card that goes with the business really pretty. She has donated this really, really precious um, box bottom project bag that I can't wait to share with you. Look at this. You guys, this fabric, are you kidding me? Little foxes wearing <laughs> just like vests, like waistcoats and monocles and really cute fedoras and neckties. It's really, really precious. And I <laughs> I don't know why, this one just kind of stood out as the perfect prize um, for this portion of the knit along. It's a really great quality piece. I love it so much. The fabric is nicely lined. It's sturdy. I know that if you open it up to its box bottom, which it does have a nice box bottom down here, that if you open it up, it will sit on the box bottom nicely if you have a project inside. Um, it's just really, really really beautifully made the stitches are so nice and straight it has a nice taupe plane inside here really really spacious perfect for a bigger project maybe a shawl project or a few sock projects it's really nice so this is going to be included in the prize for the february portion of the 2018 wool needles hands year of hats knit along in addition to the project bag i am also including stitch markers by tracy as well and these are little I'm going to actually take it out because this one is not stapled to a business card, but they are the prettiest little blue stitch markers or yes, yeah, they're stitch markers. They're not progress keepers and they just have this really pretty blue stone and then a little heart that says made with love really very precious. So you're going to be getting this series of stitch markers, this project bag as your prize for the February portion of the knit along. Okay. I don't want to go into too much detail about what's involved in this. You can definitely check that out on Ravelry. I definitely recommend you do that. Um, it is an involved knit along, so there's lots of different aspects. I mean, every month is a different theme. So definitely check out what's going on for the knit along there. So all I'm going to do right now is just show you guys some of the finished objects that have already come through for the February portion of this knit along. So here's another look at some of the amazing hats that are being knit. Now, remember, the theme for this portion of the knit along was just to knit a hat for a member of the opposite sex. The purpose of that was to knit something that wouldn't necessarily be for you, even though of course you might knit a man's hat and want to wear it yourself. I do that with my husband's hats all the time. Whatever, it was pretty simple when I came up with it. So it's to be interpreted however you want it to be interpreted. But this is a look at some of the amazing finished objects that are coming through over on the Ravelry thread for the February portion of the knit along. <laughs> so much for submitting all these beautiful finished objects. I'm so excited about this. I'm going to be sharing with you guys the one I am working on later in the show. Um, but this is really so much fun to see all of the great hats that you guys are knitting. I'm getting so many ideas for patterns that I want to knit just by looking at your guys' finished objects. They're all so great. So thank you guys so much for submitting those. I want to take a minute now to share with you guys a portion of the grand prize that will be given at the very end of this knit along in January. Um, when we're done with all 12 months, I do, I am kind of slowly compiling a, a grand prize. Um, right now I'm including two pieces that were donated to the podcast and that is, is going to grow. Um, 
a little bit up until the time that we have our grand prize. But these two that I'm gonna show you are spectacular. So I just wanna share this with you really quick right now. Um, the first is a beautiful project bag. I was actually um, admiring on Instagram a project bag that was made by Trisha, who is joining the stitches um, on Instagram. And she's also joining the stitches on Etsy as well. So it's join the stitches .com, And then it's at uh, joy in the stitches on Instagram. She makes beautiful project bags. I just received her donation in the mail a few days ago. And I have to tell you, it was a moment of just like, I was kind of in disbelief. Um, because the, the quality of the bags was so high and like just I mean I don't even really have words I was just so impressed I was just really floored and impressed by the quality of her project bag so if you have not looked in to Trisha's Etsy page um, for her project bags joy in the stitches you need to stop pause the podcast right now check it out so you know exactly what I'm talking about and even then you're not really gonna know because you need to have it in your hands to feel it I am so proud to be able to offer this as a prize uh, grand prize for the year of hats uh, knit along because it's just it's really beautiful so why don't I go ahead and show you already so here is a project bag by Trisha at joy in the stitches and you guys it's so beautiful I mean look at this look at these fabrics and the way that she's quilted them in this really pretty like partial chevron print oh I just I love it so much and the stitch work is beautiful I love the I just love the quilting ass I love that it looks quilted and I'm not a quilter I don't know if I'm speaking about this correctly but you can tell that it's been quilted that it feels really sturdy um and and you can tell the interfacing is a good quilted interfacing if that makes any sense it's heavy I think the best way that I can explain this to you when it comes to the weight of the project bag and the fabric is it feels expensive. And Trisha, I don't know what you charge for these, um, but I, I hope you're charging a lot because they're really beautiful and they feel just so luxurious. Here's the back side. She has such a great way of contrasting fabrics. Like this fabric here plays so well with the like shape of the way she's quilted this here. It just, it goes together so well. And then hello, this like teal zipper. I love it. I love it all. It's just so beautiful. And the zips are really nice quality, really good quality zippers. They don't have any jags in them. Um, they don't get caught up or anything like that. They're just... Okay, you know, I need to stop. So they're beautiful. And this uh, this project bag will come with a little um, progress. It's actually a stitch marker. I guess you can make it a progress keeper if you wanted, but it's really beautiful. The little stone and it has like a little feather charm that's attached to it. Let's look at the inside of the bag. So here's the inside of the bag here. Really pretty. Super, super spacious. I mean, this thing, once the box bottom is open, you can see just how spacious this is so this is going to be included in the grand prize i mean this is big enough to hold like a small sweater project um i don't know i love it so much so this is going to be included in the grand prize in addition to this i am oh and before i forget this is trisha's business card really really pretty business card so joy in the stitches that will be in there as well. Okay, so the next prize I'm really excited to share with you guys. Um, again, when this person contacted me offering this as a prize for the for the knit along on the podcast, I was just floored and honored and I'm so excited to be able to share this with you guys. And it's so beautifully relevant to what we're doing. This is the book Knitted Beanies and Slouchy Hats. 31 Original Designs to Suit Your Style and Attitude by Diane Service. And you guys, this book is so fantastic. There are so many patterns in this that I love if I don't love all of them. It's really, really very beautiful. You can kind of get a sneak peek at some of the patterns in the back here. It's fantastic. So this copy that I'm holding right here that's shrink wrapped, this is going to be included in the gift. She was kind enough to include one for me to keep and I can't, I'm so excited because like I said, there's so many in here that I would love to knit and I plan on knitting several for my knit along hats. Um, so I'm super excited about that. So here is the copy that she gave me. She was kind enough to sign the inside, which was really sweet. But you guys, there are so many beautiful patterns 
in this book. I just, you know, it's not super often that I look through a knitting pattern book and love several of the patterns, um, which is why I don't buy knitting pattern books very often because I can't justify spending that kind of money when I like two patterns in the book. But this book, I really love like every single one. They're just so cute and unique and my style. And I'm not going to show you a great deal of what's in the book just because it's, you know, a publication. Um, but you can see on the back that there are some really cute ones here. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit more about Diane in the next episode of the podcast on a new segment that I'm introducing today um, because I want to tell you a little bit more about her background as a knitwear designer and then as a book author as well or um, I guess you can say that that's what this is because uh, she has a really cute story of her making background you know as one of a one of we fiber folk and I want to share that with you guys so in the next episode of the podcast definitely look for that but in the meantime I wanted to introduce this to you as one of the grand prizes for the year of hats knit along knitted beanies and slouchy hats you get 31 original beautiful patterns in here um and I'm just I'm so excited to offer this to you guys so this is by Diane Service you can find it now if you want on Amazon highly recommend it if you just can't wait definitely check it out her book is for sale on Amazon um yeah, because this might be where you get your ideas for some of your hats to knit this year. So definitely look into that. Okay, so that's all for Knit Alongs right now. We'll talk more about it in episode 22. But now you have a little bit of an idea of what's coming for the grand prize. We've given our prizes away for January. We have a great prize coming for February. I'm just so excited. So you guys keep the hats rolling in. It's so much fun seeing what you're creating. I can't wait to share mine with you, even though it's not really that far along yet. But whatever. <laughs> guys, I have a new mug and I'm super excited to share this with you. In the last episode of the podcast, you got to meet our big fat house cat, Oscar. And so I was at Home Goods. You'll find that I, if you, you know, there's several things behind me right now, which I'll talk about in a second, that I get at Home Goods. I'm obsessed with the Home Goods. One just opened up a year ago, a year ago, not just opened up, right down the street from us, which is super dangerous, but also really amazing. And so I'm there all the time finding little bits and bobs that I would like to have. And that's where I got this mug. So I'm really happy to share this with you guys today. So take a look at this beautiful mug. Oh my goodness. That is the spitting image of my cat Oscar. And isn't this just, I mean, I, can you even see the expression on his little face? That's what Oscar looks like all the time. He's 11 years old and he's grouchy and he sleeps all day. But that's kind of pretty much what he looks like in general. But this cup is so cool. I love it. I love the texture of the cup. The the painting on this right here almost has like an embossed feel to it. It's got this little speckling in the um, kind of like the stoneware, I guess, of the mug, but I love it so much. So that is my new cat mug. Um, yeah. Oh, and he's wearing, he's wearing a cute little bow tie. Oscar doesn't wear a bow tie, but he should have one. So anyway, and then inside my mug, I'm actually drinking a new tea. I had picked this tea to be one of them that I include in the orders that go out for Fiber for the People. But the problem was I only send out tea that's wrapped individually in bags for, you know, health reasons. You don't want open tea bags just randomly, you know, packed away with yarn. So I like to have the tea bags that I include in my orders be individually wrapped. Well, when I picked this one up at the store and opened it, I thought they were individually wrapped, but they weren't, whatever, who cares? So anyway, I kept this one for myself and I'm so happy that I did and I wish that I could share it with you guys, um, but they don't come individually wrapped, so you're gonna have to find this yourself. So this is actually saffron tea. Um, it's saffron fusion chamomile. Um, it's by Taja Tea. So I'll hold it up here so you can see it. So this is what it looks like. This is the box. It says, saffron is truly the prized gem of the spice world. It is the most expensive and exotic herb on earth. Tea is one of the most consumed beverages worldwide, blah, blah, blah. Like saffron, the origins of tea are ancient and there are several, several potential health benefits drinking tea may provide by combining saffron, tea, and love. We have created a truly unique and exotic beverage for your body and soul's pleasure. I, did you really need to know that? I don't know. But it talks about all the benefits of saffron. Um, it's really, really tasty. And like I mentioned previously, I've been using um, blue agave syrup instead of honey to sweeten my tea or any of my beverages, just because you use far less to get a far sweeter um, result. And so I steeped one bag of this in this giant, 
mug, because this is more of like a pretty serious coffee mug than a teacup, um, but I just steeped one bag and about a tablespoon of blue agave syrup, and you guys, it's perfect. It tastes like chamomile tea, but you can kind of get a hint of some other spice in there. I'm not 100% familiar with saffron. Like, I, I don't think I could identify the flavor of saffron. It's not something, it's not a spice I use often, <laughs> um, but it tastes like really good chamomile tea, so if you want a new tea to try, definitely look for Taja Tea Saffron Tea with chamomile. It's really delicious. Oh, and um, I actually picked this up, if I can get it to focus. I guess you've already seen it, but... And I picked this up at Home Goods. Home Goods is a really excellent place if you have a home goods near you. If you're out of the United States, I'm not sure if they have home goods, but it's an affiliate of TJ Maxx, which is another big, um, I don't really know what you call those kinds of stores, but it's another really popular store here in the States. And home goods is like the homeware uh, branch of that store. But anyway, they sell tea and the tea is marked down just a little bit, but it's really a great place to find interesting and new teas. And that's, um, that's where I got that one. So yeah, I'm drinking saffron tea and chamomile out of my new Oscar mug. It looks like you, Oscar. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and answer two questions that I've been asked several times since the last couple of episodes. They're really cute questions, so I thought I'd just take a second to answer them really quickly because it'll be pretty brief um, for this segment of Ask Me Anything in the podcast. So the first one was what lipstick am I wearing? So this is the lipstick I was wearing in the last few episodes where I've had that question asked. This lipstick is actually called Poppy Pop and it is by Clinique. This is what the um, tube looks like. So... It's a really cute tube. Now, it it's not like a traditional Clinique tube, if you're familiar with the Clinique uh, cosmetics lines. It has this little like marble thing at the top. And I think it's because it was a collaboration with Jonathan Adler. I really don't know anything about that. I just saw it at the counter and it was really cute. It's the perfect shade of like, well, I mean like a poppy color. Um, let's see. It's just a really good poppy color. It almost, it has like a little smear of gold gloss at the tip of it right now because I wore, I'm wearing like a gold gloss underneath it. <laughs> but anyway, it's a really great color. There was a while ago, I don't know what I was reading. It was several years ago, but I read a quote from some lady in the fashion industry and she made a comment about like, if you're not put together, if you if you have to get out of the house, but you can't get yourself put together all that fast, whether your hair is a mess or you don't have any jewelry on or whatever, you can always like rely on a nice orangey red lip color to pull you together. And you guys, if I can leave you with any, those of you that like to wear lip gloss or lipstick, and this is relevant for you, if I can provide you with any piece of advice in that domain is definitely have an orangey red lip color on hand because it is so true. If you kind of look like a hot mess, but you need to get out of the, the house quickly to go run an errand. Um, and this happens to me often. You have a toddler and you know, I need to get to the post office or I need to, do whatever and I need to get out of the house um, and I'm really not looking top notch, I throw on this lipstick and I get pulled together. It almost just looks like I'm intentionally looking like a hot mess because I put on orangey red lipstick. Whatever, trust me, try it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But in the meantime, this is Poppy Pop by Clinique. The next question was regarding this little guy. He is my alpaca top, or not topiary, um, what do they call it? Succulent planter and this is not a real succulent and you guys if you have not discovered these little fake succulent planters which I have like several behind me here um these things are amazing because I don't know what it is about succulents you think they'd be the easiest forms of plant life to take care of because they don't require very much water but I suck at taking care of succulents completely not intending that pun but they're really not, for whatever reason, it eludes me. So I get the artificial ones and these things are fantastic. Like if I put it up really close, you don't know that that's not real. Well, other than the fact that it looks really abnormally green when it's up close. 
but you catch my drift. Anyway, this little alpaca planter came from Home Goods. Surprise, surprise. Um, they have the cutest little succulent planters there that you can buy all of them. They're all, they're adorable. You, they sell them at Michael's and they're usually kind of pricey, but Home Goods, it's like a fraction of the price and they have the cutest little planter designs. Um, but when I saw this, I couldn't resist. So yeah, this came from um, Home Goods and I got it, I would say, I want to say like a month and a half ago, but that doesn't mean anything because they carry things like this kind of like on rotation. So my little alpaca succulent planter came from Home Goods, and I love it so much. So if you guys are interested in putting little succulent plants around the house, but you really don't have the wherewithal to keep them alive, definitely go the artificial route because nobody's going to be any wiser. It's really amazing. <laughs> So this is a new segment to the podcast, and I'm really, really excited to share this segment with you and to see how this segment is going to develop over time. As you know, if you've been watching the podcast from the very beginning, one of my big goals for having this podcast was to not only share my knitting experiences and my works in progress and things related to me as a knitter, but really primarily to bring the knitting world here and to kind of broaden our perspective of what's out in this community as much as I can. Um, and, and that's always been a big goal of mine is to do that. And so anytime I feel like I have an opportunity to share with you what's going on out in the knitosphere, I really love to take those opportunities because it's really important um, for, you know, we as knitters who tend to be a little bit more introverted and uh, don't really know all of the details that's going on in the fiber community. It's kind of nice to have a place where that information can be disseminated in an entertaining um, kind of way. So that's really something that I try to do. I strive to do that here on the podcast as much as I can. And I'm really working and the wheels are turning on ways that I can continue to um, expand that portion of the podcast. Um, as the podcast carries on, I'm finding that there's going to be more opportunities for me to do that. So just little, little bits and bobs about why I'm starting this segment of the podcast. So today I want to introduce to you guys something that I saw on Instagram just recently by the lovely Martine who is at Tennis Knits. Or I saw something that she'd created um, on her Instagram page that I was absolutely and utterly amazed by. What it was was a kind of like a blanket that was made from woven and knitted and crocheted fabric pieces that formed a farm. A little bit of background, just a tiny bit that I was able to glean from the Instagram post. It, it sounds like she she found the pattern in an old knitting book in a, a knitting shop along in her travels at some point. And this was before she had kids. And one year, she I think it was when her daughter turned one, they got her these little wooden farm animals. And it caused her to think back on this book that had this little knitted farmland pattern in it. And so she took on the challenge of um, completing the pattern so that her daughter could play with her farm animals on an actual piece of farmland. And so it's, it's really very special. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass this over to Martine, who is so nice to provide us with some photos of this process. And I want you guys to see a little bit more about exactly what it was that she did. So this is the first um, submission for the in the community segment of the podcast. So check it out. <laughs> Fiber people. My name is Martina and you can find me on social media as Tina's Knits and Taylor asked me if I could tell a bit more about this knitted um, farmyard I just I recently finished. Um, it took me two years to finish but that was mainly because we also moved house so, I mean, for a year I just moved boxes around and didn't do anything um, very creative, only some very comfortable knitting. But um, I think you could finish it in less than a year. Easy. But I also wanted to work on it only when my daughter Frida was asleep, so it would really be a surprise. Um, the inspiration were, was um, her first birthday gift, which were all these wooden farm animals. And um, 
she really took to it. So I thought, I have to do something with that. And I remembered, I once saw a book about how to make a rug. And I found it again, and it's called The Knitted Farmyard. It's from 1985 by the Search Press. And the woman behind it is Hannelore Wernhardt. And it gives you the basics uh, to make a rug like this. And also instructions for making farm animals, knitted farm animals and knitted farm people. But I didn't do that officially. Um, you use the rock fabric base stuff, that very stiff um, stuff to attach everything on. Uh, just a small part is knitted actually, just this, this part here where all the vegetables are growing. Uh, it was a bit of freeform knitting which I then just um, sewed, on, sewed, sewed on to the fabric rug fabric and the major part of it is latch hooking and uh, embroidering. For the embroidering um, I used a lot of strands like five or six or eight strands uh, at the same time to fill the, the rug base and the latch hooking part um, for the cross, I, uh, I, I, I just bought this prefabricated strips, I think 10 centimeters long. And for the other parts I want, that I wanted to have a bit of length in, I just um, made the strips myself, um, 20 centimeters or 25 centimeters long. So I could really get some different levels to play and just, it, just adorable to feel it. It's yeah, very 70s. The, what I like is the trees which are freestanding and the house which has foam in it so you can also just lay on it and it's really comfortable. And I really like to make all the vegetables which are uh, mainly crocheted. So, the one tip I would really give you and hope you take to heart is to use a latch hook because I didn't. Um, I used a crochet hook to latch all those thousands and thousands of ends of yarn in, strips of yarn, and that was a nightmare. You just had to go in zombie mode or put podcasts on or um, music because that took hours and hours because I had to handle every little strip twice before I could tuck it. So buy a latch hook. That is really important message about it. And then I finished the, the back of it with wool felt. And so we can roll it up, roll it up and get it out of our way and um, it still looks pretty. Yeah, I used all leftover yarn except for the cross and also some yarn I hoarded like this lovely blue which I bought on a special holiday and was still in my stash for years and years and now finally I could use it and it really comes to its full potential as a pond. <laughs> I love it. So I hope we can play for it with it for years and um, uh, that it will be here for a couple of generations, maybe. <laughs> I would love that. So I say bye bye to all of you. Thanks for watching and uh, thank you Taylor for inviting me. Bye.
In the last episode of the podcast, I introduced another new segment called Itty Bitty Nitty Gritty Little Questions. And this is a place where we can submit these little questions that we have that nag and, and pull at us that we're afraid to ask because maybe it's something we should already know. Um, and so I wanted a place where we could actually chat about some of these questions because we all have them. They're all out there. And I think it's a really great opportunity to open a forum where we chat about some of these questions that maybe we're afraid to ask. So don't forget to head over to the Ravelry group to check out this thread because there are more than just this one question in the thread, lots of conversation regarding some of the questions that have popped up. It's really very interesting, but I'm just going to go ahead and share one with you guys today. So here it is. I was at my local yarn shop, which offer a $10 dropping class. You can come in, pay $10, and if you need help with something, they have a fantastic teacher there ready to help you with whatever you need. Anyway, I needed to learn provisional cast on and then a few complicated to me things for a shawl collar on my super bulky grandpa sweater by Hohi Locatelli. I got the provisional cast on all set and then when it was the time for me to knit my first row, she told me to drop the slip knot, i.e. pull it out. It occurred to me then, should I be doing this all the time? I was so focused on what she was teaching me next that I didn't want to get sidetracked to ask that. But now I'm wondering, are you supposed to cast on the number of stitches called for in the pattern, not including the slip knot? And then do you drop the slip knot on the first row? Mind blown. Okay. So the person who submitted this knows who they are. Thank you so much for this submission. Um, it's not anonymous if you head over to the Ravelry group, but I did say that I would keep it anonymous here on the podcast. But thank you. You know who you are for submitting the question. Okay, this one was really interesting to me because I've never heard of ever having to drop your your slip knot, um, which is essentially the first stitch. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, down in the comment section below, and I definitely am not a pro um, at all of these questions. I don't always know the answers to them. Um, but as far as I know, no matter what cast on method you're using, if you are required to put a slip knot on your needle, that slip knot counts as your first stitch. Especially if, I mean, you're gonna do your slip knot and then you're gonna cast on your additional stitches. But for example, if you need to cast on 10 stitches, you do your slip knot and then you cast on an additional nine stitches to make a total of 10 stitches. So if anybody has any, you know, clarification as to why the instructor may have asked her to drop her slip knot when doing a provisional cast on, definitely let us know. I know that a provisional cast on, the purpose of that is to um, cast on on a piece of yarn that's not actually going to be part of your project so that you can pull it out later and have a row of active stitches um, to slip onto your needle for a later portion of your project. I understand that. I, I'm just not sure I've ever heard of having to drop the slip knot. So I'm actually going to open this up to you guys out there in the community to answer down below in the comment section, or better yet to head over to the Ravelry group and answer over there. I did my best to answer um, on the Ravelry page as well. But if you guys have anything else to add to that, definitely head over and answer over there because it's a really interesting question. Why would you be asked to drop your slip knot um, when you're doing a provisional cast on? So that was a really excellent question. And the, as far as I know, you do have to count it as your first stitch, but there may have been a reason why, I, I mean, I'm certain there was a reason why the instructor told um, this person to do that. So if you guys have anything to add to that, definitely head over to the Ravelry page and uh, see what you can contribute to that conversation. <laughs> All right, guys, I have a tip for you today from the Dying Studio. So follow me into the Dying Studio where I'm gonna just share with you guys a, uh, it's not really so much a tip as it is a product recommendation for how I get my skeins of yarn dry before hanging them out to dry, if that makes any sense. Hey guys, so I'm out here in the Dying Studio and I have a, kind of a tip for you, but it's more of Kind of a product recommendation it's uh, I'm not sponsored in any way it's just that I just bought this and I'm really excited about it and so I want to share it with you guys it is I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera right here and I'm sure that this is not like new for some of you I don't know if maybe some people use this and I know when my brother and sister-in-law were living in Barcelona they used one of these to spin out their laundry before hanging it out to dry um, because that was just something you more commonly did so this is a Nina Soft um, spin dryer. 
You can see it's got a little basin in here where you put, whether it's your laundry or in my case, yarn, um, and you can spin it out. And then the water comes from right here. And what's really cool about that is that I can add it into a pot and I have um, essentially, at least partially, a pot for dyeing yarn later. So it's really, really cool. I mean, the more yarn that you spin out in here, the more water you're gonna get here. And you're gonna be amazed at how much water comes out of six skeins of yarn. So the reason I've decided to use a spin dryer as opposed to the spin cycle on my washing machine is because I've kind of ended up learning the hard way that you don't really wanna just run your spin cycle on your washing machine. Um, it can burn out the motor inside. So that's kind of why I've decided to move to this. I learned that the hard way, so take it from me. This is a better um, little investment if you have a dyeing studio and you need to dye, you know, your small batches of yarn, so. Okay, another thing that's really great about this is it's super convenient. I mean, it's it fits into small spaces, so you don't have to find a huge place to store it, and you can just, it's very lightweight, so you can pull it out with its handle, put it where you need it, and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have my bucket of yarn here that is wet and ready to go into the spinner. It's just been soaking in a Euclid bubble bath. Um, I'm gonna spin it out and then that way when I hang it out to dry, it'll dry super fast because most of the water will already be out. So I like to only add six skeins of yarn at a time. This little purple guy goes on top once you've finished adding your yarn. Keep it kind of even when you add your yarn so that way the weight distribution is even. All right, and that is six skeins of yarn. I'm gonna put my little guy on top. Now I'm gonna push this all the way down and that's what starts the cycle. You wanna push it down and kind of hold your hands there to hold it in place, let it wiggle itself into kind of like a steady rhythm and then you can let your hands go and it does the rest on its own. All right, I want you to see how much water comes out of six skeins of yarn. It's really pretty amazing. So I'm gonna move you a little bit closer here. I'm pushing down in place for a second until it kicks in and here it goes and I just let it spin until the water stops dripping out of the bottom of the uh, basin here but you can see, I mean, just from, and it's super quiet. I mean, you can hear the hum, but other than that, it's super quiet. I mean, look at, look at the water we have here, guys. This is like, you know, almost half a kettle of, you know, dye water. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it spin until it quits dripping. It usually takes about a minute and then I'll be all done. Okay, so it is um, all done dripping. You can see that there's like, one drip every couple of seconds coming out. Oh, a little bit came out right there. Um, but otherwise, it is pretty much ready to stop. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lift the latch. You can see it spinning in there. It stops spinning. And then pull out this purple guy. And I can pull out my yarn. I wanna find my ring. Okay, so there is my yarn pretty much ready to hang. So you can kind of see, I'll hold it the best I can here. See if it makes it there. It's beautiful. This is um, my jewelry box colorway. But yeah, it's definitely ready to hang out and it's not gonna take any time to dry. So there you go, a tip from me to you. If you need something to help speed the drying process along, definitely invest in a laundry spinner. I got this on Amazon, I think it was $130. It's called Nina Soft. Um, you get it's super fast shipment. It's really great quality. I mean, it just has sped things up a lot for me and it's gonna save me a washing machine. So there you go. Right, let's chat about works in progress. You guys, I don't have any half objects or finished objects to share with you guys today. Gosh, which is like the first time in several episodes that I actually don't, but I do have some exciting works in progress that I wanna share with you guys. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm 
I'm not going to share every, I mean, it's really not very efficient for me to share every work in progress I have, even the ones that I have out in the forefront of my uh, works in progress collection, but I have a few that I have been working on actively. So I'm going to share those with you guys today. Um, the first that I want to share with you is my Summer Sidewalks Baby Blanket. And this is a pattern by 5410 Studios. And it's not necessarily intended to be exclusively for, um, a as a baby blanket. It's really just a blanket pattern. But it comes in a variety of sizes. So you can make it into a blanket pattern. And I'm super, super excited to share with you guys, um, what I've got so far. So I'm actually going to scoop back a little bit so I can hold it up and show you how my blanket's coming along because so. it's just such a relaxing knit. I love the fabric. I love the yarn. I love the color so much. Um, as you can see, it's really beautiful. So this is the Summer Sidewalks Blanket by 5410 Studios. And you guys, it's just so lovely. Um, the design, I'll lift it so you can kind of see. It's just a really fun kind of striped ribbing that happened not it's not even really ribbing it's just stripes of garter stitch with um, stripes of stockinette stitch and then it's got a real thick garter stitch border it creates a fabric that's really soft and um, flexible and malleable and not rigid by any means it's just perfect for a baby blanket. And I think that's one of the main reasons why I love it so much is because, and I don't know how I can show you, the drape of the fabric, I think that might've been the word that I was looking for, the drape of the fabric created by, I think, you know, the yarn contributes greatly to that, but I really believe that this pattern just lends itself to a really nice drape, especially if you're working with cotton yarn and this is uh, all cotton yarn. Um, and so I'm really, really excited about this pattern. If you uh, watched the previous episode where I talk about this, I was using a different pattern before. You can go back and watch that to see what pattern I was using before. But the previous pattern I was using was just so sluggish for me personally. The stitch pattern just took forever. Um, there was just a lot involved in the stitch pattern and, and it made a really nice fabric, but it was just too slow. And and I really, I like the idea of having a knitted baby blanket, but I like the idea of having something that's mindless and and effortless essentially that's relaxing because these final months I mean I'm going on 33 weeks um, in my pregnancy now these final weeks not even months these final weeks um, you know they come with a fair bit of anxiety and so having something like this that's for the baby but that's also soothing is really important and I extend a huge amount of gratitude to 5410 studio for this pattern because it is just exactly what I needed when it came to adjusting what I was doing before to find something more um, to find something simpler to work and this just came in in the clutch. I'm using Bernat Softy Baby Chunk or excuse me Softy Baby Cotton Yarn. It's a DK weight yarn. The color is aqua. The color is gorgeous. I've shown it before and it just lights up the screen. I love it so much. The fabric is so soft. I'm definitely going to be using this yarn for future baby projects and maybe even just for a future blanket that I make for around the house because it comes in all sorts of beautiful colors and it's just such a nice yarn. I really love it. Um, I'm also knitting this on a pair of Addies and this yarn, especially cotton yarn, flies off of Addies. Like sometimes I have to be careful because it really just flies. So I'm, I'm loving how fast it's knitting up with this. But that is my Summer Sidewalks Blanket by 5410 Studios. It is a little over halfway finished at this point, I believe. Um, and I'm hoping that this like overdrive of energy that I'm having lately is gonna help me get this thing done because I really would like to have it done before the baby comes. But if I happen to not have it finished before the baby comes, it'll be a nice easy uh, pattern to work on during those first several weeks, months, even who knows, <laughs> um, of an, having a new baby. So I'm really excited about this. And as I mentioned before, this is living in my ink bags, peekaboo bag which is Erica, who is at Ink Bags on Instagram. She makes really gorgeous peekaboo bags. I'll get it in there. But that is what this is living in right now. 
and I love it. This is a really beautiful project bag, so definitely check out ink bags. But that is my summer sidewalks baby blanket and I'm loving it. Okay, next I wanna share with you guys the progress, which is not very much, of the hat that I'm working on for my February hat. This is a hat that I'm knitting for my husband, Brandon, um, and it's kind of an original design. I'm not writing this down. It's just, I'm having just fun kind of coming up with the little design and it's inspired by some things that I've seen lately that I really like. And so, um, I'm just going to show you what I've gotten so far. This, and it's kind of goofy, very wonky looking. So I'm just going to preface this by saying this is a little on the wonky side. I'm going to show it upside down for a second. So this is all I have so far is the brim of the hat. I decided because I've seen people do this contrasting like edge, I guess you could say I've seen it on socks, I've seen it on other things, but it's just a thin contrasting edge that I really, really love. I love that detail. And so I wanted to do something like that in his hat. So I just decided to include a real thin contrast. This is the um, English toffee colorway of Fiber for the People yarn in the O Merino worsted. Um, this is a worsted weight hat. And then this is Patton's Classic Wool, which I love so much. And you guys, I can't even remember. I think it's just navy, like gray navy. I'm not 100% sure. But I blended the two because I think they look really great together. Now, when I say it looks wonky, if I just hold it like this, it kind of has like a rippling. There's like a little bit of a ripple here. And that's because instead of immediately starting the ribbing, I wanted the edge to curl a little bit where that contrasting color was. And so the first um, two rounds of the brim of the hat are just stockinette. So it's curling in a little, a little bit and it's also kind of giving... And I think too, because the O Merino worsted is a lighter worsted and then the Patton's Classic is a true worsted air and weight yarn, it probably has a little bit of a ripple, but fortunately I've had him put this on his head and when he puts it on his head, it, it looks fantastic. It, you can't even tell um, because it stretches around his head nicely. So that's kind of why that's happening and I'm not sure that I love it. It's not very like photogenic when I try to show it on Instagram, um, but it is what it is and I'm gonna continue because I like it. I like the color combination. I'm currently working the the regular portion of the hat, the body of the hat, and I'm going between a stockinette kind of stripe and a garter stripe. There's a hat out there and I can't... A copycat hat? I keep seeing CC hat. Um, it's a design that they're using for those messy bun hats. It, it, what it is, it's just a strips of stockinette and garter, stockinette and garter. And actually this hat that I'm gonna show you here is being knit for the February portion of the hats, um, of the knit along. And this is the hat I'm talking about. And this hat looks fantastic. And you can see that I was not only inspired to do that little chunky ribbing thing that's happening or the stripes of garter and stockinette, but also the contrasting um, little brim edge there. That's kind of where I got that inspiration too. So I'm kind of copying this person's copycat hat, but I love that. I think that's really cool. So I'm attempting that um, with this and I'm just kind of improvising as I go. So you can kind of see there, that's my little garter stitch and then this, or not even my garter stitch, it's just reverse stockinette stitch. And then this is my stockinette stitch here. So we're gonna see how it looks. I think it'll have kind of a cool texture. Brandon doesn't know that this is what I'm doing. He thinks I'm just doing a basic stockinette stitch hat, but um, surprise, surprise, honey. You're gonna get a textured, ripply, other kind of hat, but that's what I have so far for my um, for my February hat for the knit along. So pretty simple. I love the yarn. I love the contrasting colors, but it's going to be a nice hat. It's I wanted it to fit him nicely around his head, but I didn't want it to be too tight. Um, and so I think this is going to be kind of a nice stretch. So that's that. Love that. It's living right now in my Peekaboo project bag by Darn Yarn. I will show you. This was one that I purchased way back from her because I'm obsessed. I think I saw her bags for the first time on, I think it was the Hey Sister podcast. I don't know, but I remember watching whatever I was watching when I saw them and I immediately got on the, got on the horn and made an order, even though I didn't, I did it on my computer. <laughs> So this is Darn Yarn Peekaboo Project Bag. If you were um, paying attention to the little shop update I had about a week ago, I did a collaboration with Chelsea at Darn Yarn where she provided the project bag, I provided the yarn. 
they went really beautifully together um, and it was so fun to do that. So I love her project bags. So that is Darn Yarn Peekaboo Project Bags. Definitely check these out because they're fantastic. Okay, the next work in progress is really special to me. This is the last one I'm gonna talk about today. Um, but I'm gonna share with you guys the project bag first because I love this project bag so much. I saw um, this one posted on Instagram and immediately fell in love. So this project bag is done by Nicole, who is Nicole SP Designs on Instagram. This fabric, you guys, I die. It's so pretty. Look at this. It's like another fox motif, but look how colorful that is. And it's really, it's the perfect fabric for the project. And I'll share that in just a second. But you guys, these project bags by NSP Designs are so beautiful, so well made. The, the fabric has a really nice interfacing in it that makes it nice and rigid. It definitely stands up when you set it on its box bottom. The contrasting fabric inside is this really pretty like gold dot motif. And this lilac zipper, like see, it's the little details. If you've watched the podcast, you know that I'm a sucker for the small details and things. I just, I pick up on that and I love it so much. So this like lilac zipper, the really cute, you know, brand label, the choice of fabric, the interfacing, everything, the strap that goes around the hand is just really ideal. Nicole, thank you so much um, for making such amazing project bags. You had me as soon as you posted this on Instagram and you have me every time you post a new one, but... I can't buy all the project bags or else I'll go broke. So anyway, that is my project bag, but let's talk about what's living inside of this project bag. And you guys, I am so excited to share this with you. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably know what I'm about to show you. But I'm going to preface this by telling you that last year, one of my big goals for last year was to learn how to crochet because I really wanted to crochet a granny stripe blanket. I love how kitschy they are. I love how colorful they are. And I keep hearing people talk about how relaxing and easy and mindless they are. And if you know anything about me, that's my kind of thing. Um, and so I just, I really wanted to jump on the bandwagon for that. So I hitched myself up to YouTube and found a couple tutorials on how to knit the stitch. And I, that's all I did. I didn't like go into detail about how to learn how to crochet from square one. I didn't take any lessons. I literally just learned how to do the granny stripe stitch so I could start the blanket because that's really what I wanted to do. Anyway, that took me down the, the crochet rabbit hole big time. And I'm really so happy I did. So uh, move on already, Taylor, and show us the gosh darn blanket. So here it is, my first ever crochet project. And this is my granny stripe blanket. You guys, <gasps> yay, I'm showing it on the podcast. It's upside down, there. Oh my goodness, look at this, you guys. Look at these colors. I'm gonna talk about this yarn in a second. Um, the only yarn, that I mean the only, so okay, there's one dyer primarily being represented here, except for this one down at the bottom. This is long dog yarn in the um, fig colorway, this uh, dark, deep kind of purpley pink color down here at the bottom. These ones all up here, this is Northbound Knittery, I believe. Um, and it came to me in a package, a donation from Row One, which is a subscription yarn program that you can sign up for. You pay a certain amount every month and then she sends you a um, curated package of, I want to say it's 100 grams of mini fiber, or excuse me, mini little mini skeins from a particular indie dyer. So it's a way to kind of get comfortable and familiar with indie dyers and their yarns. Um, and so all of the little minis that I'm using for my granny stripe um, are all, so far at least, come from row one. And I have not woven in any of these ends, so pardon my, pardon my ends, people. But that's what I, and, and I know like there's ways to like crochet over these and I'm definitely gonna learn all these awesome techniques, but right now they're just kind of hanging there like random, what do they call that? Like sporadic hair growth when you have like weird hairs that grow out of places. That's kind of what's happening here. This is sporadic end growth. Anyway, sporadic yarn growth. So that is my granny stripe and the yarn I'm using, like I said, is from row one northbound knitting or northbound knittery. Um, you guys, I love this 
so much. Like I wanna just take a minute and chat with you guys about how much I love working on this. Um, and I'm gonna do that in a second, but I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit more about the yarn. So what you see there, um, those are all little minis. And I have in the bottom of my bag here, and I'm gonna pull this out in a messy handful, what's left of my little collection of minis. So this is what's left of the little collection of minis from row one. Now this isn't gonna get me very far. Like I rip through one of these in no time on my blanket. So I'm definitely gonna need more minis to make my blanket. And that's okay. And I picked up this big glass container um, at Home Goods for all of the little mini skeins that I've collected over the days. And I knew I needed something like that to store all these little minis because they aren't fitting on my shelves where I keep all of my regular yarn. And it's really just perfect. So this is where I will be getting um, most of my yarn for my granny stripe blanket. Um, I'm so excited. I see all the minis in here and I just get so excited to use them. I have a whole slew of Fiber for the People minis down here that I'm excited about, but I think I'm going to be saving those for a pair of scrappy socks, but I have plenty in here to at least kind of keep me going on my granny stripe. And then I figure I'll just make it with minis as I collect them. But in the meantime, that's kind of what I have going on right here. So that I hear my little boy out there. Do you guys hear that? Probably getting ready for bed around now. If you hear him, that's what they're doing. They're either playing swords or he's riding around on his little like roadie horse <laughs> with a cowboy hat and a pair of cowboy boots. I don't know, it's adorable. I love hearing him out there. But anyway, that's my big mini jar and I love it so much. So that's what's gone into my granny stripes so far. Now, I love this. If you guys are thinking about taking up crochet for, I bet you there's a lot of you out there that want to learn how to crochet for a very similar reason. And actually a few of you have already mentioned that to me. Let me just tell you, take the plunge already. Join me down this rabbit hole because it's so much fun. There's so much to learn. And I, I love it so much. And you guys, it is as relaxing as everybody talks about. Once you get that stitch down, the rhythm becomes just like second nature. I, I really love it. I picked up, because I was recommended by the lovely Heather, who is a Toll House mom on Instagram, to pick up a pair or a set of clover um, armor crochet hooks. And so that's what I did. And I didn't only pick up the one I needed for the project, which is a size E hook right here. So this is the clover armor crochet hooks, but I decided to go ahead and get a new case. I picked this up on Amazon and in this case is a whole set of clover armor crochet hooks. I mean, you guys, this is what happens when it rains, it pours for me. When it comes to like a new hobby that I really love, I go big or go home. But what's really cool about this is that you can invest in a good set of crochet hooks and this isn't really even that pricey and you don't have to have several of a particular size because you can apparently, and I didn't realize this when I started crocheting because I remember I posted on my Instagram story about what you're supposed to do with your work when you stick it in the bag and it falls off of the hook because that happens. Um, and so actually many people got back to me and said, it's no big deal. It's crochet. It's fine. You just stick a little, you know, interlocking stitch marker on your loop and you're good to go. So you just do that and you stick it in your bag and you don't have to worry about anything. And then you can use this hook for another project. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And that including lots of other things that I'm discovering is the beauty of crochet. So I'm really excited about that. So Heather, thank you so much for recommending those crochet hooks. I love them. They really fit in the hand nicely. They're nice and soft. It's got like this nice buttery feel to it. It's really, it's great. And it's a little, she mentioned this to me as well. And it's so true. They're a little bit longer than like the metal ones that you get. Um, and so they kind of rest in your hand a little nicer. So you don't have the fatigue, I guess that's common. So anyway, love this. You guys, I mean, please look how beautiful fringe and all. You hear that? I don't know what's going on out there. There's some emotions are running high, it sounds like right now. Anyway, that is my granny stripe. Super excited. And it looks so pretty in my NSP Designs project bag, all the colors. Ugh, I love it. And also definitely check out row one. 
if you guys are looking for a yarn subscription program um, and maybe you want to build your collection of minis, that's a really good way to do it. In the meantime, I want to give you guys something. Um, because I'm so excited about learning this new craft, I decided that I'm gonna offer a little giveaway for you guys um, as a way of saying, jump on board with me, you know, journey down this crochet rabbit hole, let's have a giveaway. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to ask you guys a question and it's gonna be just a pretty basic question. I'd like you to answer the question in the comment section down below. I will choose a random number and I will count out to that random number from only the comments regarding the answer to the question. That person will receive the prize I'm about to share with you. So here is the, it's not really a question, it's kind of like a fill in the blank trivia, but it's probably something you can pretty easily Google. The earliest forms of crochet were actually done by using a hooked blank. So what is the hooked item that was used in really early ancient forms of crochet? Answer that question, I will choose randomly, and the winner is going to receive a little package of row one minis. These are the ones that I was talking about. You get this little package and inside this package, oh, look at all the minis. You get all of these minis. These are actually the same colors that I have in my granny stripe, so it's a lot of fun. I can tell you right now that they're really a lot of fun to work with. This is Northbound Knittery, um, or Northbound Knitting. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, but this is going to be coming to you. You get a little information booklet here that comes from row one. All of these little minis to start your crochet granny square or granny stripe or whatever you want um, adventure. And then not only that, let me finish crinkling the plastic. I am also going to include, and it's physically not here yet, I just ordered it on Amazon, it's on its way, I'm going to include a size E clover armor crochet hook for you guys to use. This is a really great size, I find that it works really, really nicely. Hi Oscar! I find it's a really good um, size for the yarn in you know a fingering weight yarn. So that is gonna be coming your way. So you will get row one little minis and a clover armor crochet hook. So answer that little bit of crochet trivia. Please subscribe to the channel so we can continue to grow this channel here. And I will be choosing a winner randomly and getting in touch with you via the next episode of the podcast. I'll let you know who the winner is. So that's how you win this prize. So that's pretty much all I have that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today for works in progress. There are a few things that I'm pulling out and working on here and there, but I just really wanted to take this time to share these ones with you guys, especially my granny stripe because I'm super excited about that. Definitely give it a shot if you haven't already. It's just, it's really a lot of fun and it's not hard to learn. There are plenty of granny stripe tutorials on YouTube for you guys to check out. They're all great. I mean, I can make a recommendation, but they're all great. So just check out any of those and get yourself started. Definitely answer that little trivia piece down in the comment section below because I'm excited to send out some row one minis to you guys and a new crochet hook to get you guys started. Let's chat a little bit about Fiber for the People because there is a shop update coming on Friday, February 16th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I am still in the process of dyeing up all the yarn for that shop update, but I do have some skeins that I wanna share with you guys today. Plus, I have some news regarding some things that are going on in the shop that I wanna share with you guys. So let's just take a minute. This won't be as long of a uh, Fiber for the People segment as typical because like I said, I don't have as much yarn to share with you guys, but regardless, I do have some things that I wanna share. But first, before before I forget, because I have forgotten the last couple of times, if you are shopping in the Fiber for the People yarn store, don't forget to use the coupon code WNHLOVE for 10% off your entire order as a Wool Needles Hands podcast viewer, so definitely keep that in mind. Okay, you can find the shop at fiberforthepeopleyarn.com. The email for the shop, if you have any questions, please um, do me the favor. If you have any questions regarding anything about Fiber for the People yarn, contact me using this email address only. Don't contact me in the comments on uh, Instagram posts Don't for things like that um, regarding like products or purchases or anything like that. Anything that's 
particular to um, your shopping experience at Fiber for the People. Do it via email only. Avoid doing it on Instagram because I don't always see those on time. So the email is fiberforthepeoplecontact at gmail.com so you can use that to get in touch with me there. Um, like I said, the shop update is Friday, February 16th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you have not signed up for the newsletter, head over to the website now, scroll all the way down to the bottom. It says subscribe. Just put your email address in there and you will receive a newsletter that comes out before each update. Anytime I'm adding any anything to the shop or I have news regarding the shop, I will send out a newsletter. There's no spam involved. It is really just me contacting you directly. That's what comes out. There's usually always a promo code. Um, usually always. Is that a is that a thing? But there's typically a promo code in the newsletter for newsletter subscribers to use in the shop. And that's usually the only place that I will put that promo code. So that's a good incentive if you would like to sign up for the newsletter just to kind of keep up to date with the promos and also what's going to be coming to the shop. Also some new things that are going on in the shop. I am now offering special orders. It is kind of a die to order, but I'm going to explain a little bit about how it works. Special orders are a means for you to purchase a larger quantity of Fiber for the People yarn in a single colorway along a single base um, without having to worry about it getting sold out at an update. So you go there to the special orders tab at the top in the shop where it says special orders and you have to purchase a minimum of three skeins, one colorway, one base, and that is a special order. So you can be sure to get the colorway you're looking for in the quantity that you need as long as it's a minimum of three. Um, so that is available to you. So if you're interested in something like that, if you've been eyeballing a particular colorway for a project and you need, you know, to rely on getting the skeins that you need, definitely check out the special order option over on the website. Okay, last Sunday, I had a little pop-up shop update. And at the time that I'm filming this, I have a couple of things left in the shop that I want to um, share with you guys so that you know it's available. So currently, as we sit here and chat, in the shop right now, I have a low fidelity. This is a colorway that I brought out um, in the last full shop update. This is on the Wist 100% non-superwash merino two-ply sock yarn. Um, it's really a beautiful variegated color with oranges and golds and purples. It's really beautiful. And then it comes with a little mini fiber in the same base on the orange cream colorway. This is in the shop right now in very limited quantities. So it is the Low Fidelity sock set. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's see if I can, there you go. So it's really, really very beautiful. So this is available right now. In addition to that, another item that is available currently is a mini fiber bundle that was curated for the pop-up shop update. There are just very few of these available right now, um, but they're beautiful. So here is the mini fiber bundle. We have in this bundle, Cactus Flower, Dust Bunny, Craig Nadoon, and One Can Become Too Familiar With Vegetables. Cactus Flower is on the Twisty Singles Luxe base, and so is Craig Nadoon. That is my 70% Superwash Merino, 30% Silk single ply base. And then these two, this is Dust Bunny, and One Can Become Too Familiar With Vegetables. They are being featured on the Supple base, which is actually a discontinued yarn base, um, but these are some of the last things that are left in the shop on that base. It's really beautiful. You can kind of get a better idea of the colors in this mini fiber bundle. If you head over to Instagram, I feel like sometimes my lights, certain colors are blown out a little bit by the lights in here. So definitely check out Instagram for a better idea of the colors there. These are available in the shop right now as well. And then I also have another mini fiber bundle. These are bulky mini fibers. This is my baby cake space, 100% untreated baby alpaca. And we have here 100 grams of alpaca yarn, each little mini fiber bundle, uh, or each little mini fiber comprising a third of that. So we have the honeydew color, the straw color, and the herb color. And this, and I, you know, and I forgot to mention with the other mini fiber bundle, this bundle is called Those Daiquiris. This bundle is called Spring Martini. So these are available in the shop now. And you guys, oh, this alpaca yarn, I'm telling you, every time I pick it up and squish it, it's just beautiful. It's so beautifully soft. This is enough yarn if you wanted to knit a scrappy hat. Um, it's a perfect amount for that. And I love 
these colors. I really, they're really flattering colors, especially for spring. I love them. So that is available in the shop now. Now I want to give you guys a little bit of an idea of a couple of the colorways coming to the shop for Friday's update, but there are more coming. I'm going to be dyeing up Peach Pit. I'm also going to be dyeing up a new colorway, which I have yet to dye. That's going to be coming up tomorrow, actually. I'm going to be busy doing that. And then I'm dyeing Jewelry Box. So those will also be in the shop. Some things to look forward to for the next shop update. But in the meantime, Let's talk about what's going into the shop that I have here to show you. The first colorway that I'm going to be putting in the shop is Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam is back and I love this colorway so much. It's been a little while since I featured it, but here is Pearl Jam. This is, oh gosh, it's so beautiful. This is on my 8020 Taylor's favorite base. It's an 8020, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. It's a two ply, so it has a really great twist. These colors are just gorgeous. Oh, I love it so much. Like, look at those. All the colors that are created here are just really something special. So this is Pearl Jam, P-U-R-L Jam. <laughs> so that is on my 8020 Taylor's favorite. I also am going to have it on Lofty DK. So this is my 100% Superwash Merino DK weight yarn. So soft, so beautiful. I really love the way the colorway plays out on this yarn base. So pretty. There's also going to be some really fantastic mini skeins available in the shop to buy individually that pair really, really well with this colorway if you want to kind of create your own sock set, if you will. Um, that's going to be really exciting. I think I'm going to have some minis that kind of are in this green right here. And I'm also going to have some minis, even in DK, that are in this really beautiful kind of light blue color that goes throughout. So, oh, so beautiful. So that is Pearl Jam on DK. I'm also going to have Pearl Jam on Gilded. So here is Gilded. This is my Gold Stellina base. It is a 70, 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, 5% Gold Stellina. Oh, it's so beautiful on this base. The gold really brings out the colors. It's really pretty. I really hear him out there right now. It sounds like he's getting ready for a bath. Oh, look at the, just look at the way the smear of green. Don't you love the way I say that, the smear? Oh, it's so beautiful. I also am going to be offering it on the MCN base. This is my four ply MCN, super soft, super just <laughs> supple, but it's beautiful. I love the way that this takes up the color as well. There's more white space that happens when I dye um, MCN just because it's such a supple and voluminous kind of like round yarn. I don't even know, like just really lofty and soft and squishy. And so I feel like there's more mass. And so there it leaves a little bit more white space, but I love the effect that it has. And with the softness of the yarn, it just, it really kind of enhances that. So this is Pearl Jam on the four ply MCN. And then, Last but not least, I'm obsessed with this base. This is Twisty Singles Lux. This is my new luxury base. This is um, single ply, 70% superwash merino, 30% silk. You guys, it's gorgeous. So here it is. This is Twisty Singles Lux. Like, oh my goodness, look how pretty that is. Absolutely gorgeous. So pretty. So that is Pearl Jam on Twisty Singles Lux. Those are all the bases that Pearl Jam will be available on. I love it so much. And like I said, there are going to be some fun mini skeins in the shop that you can pair, create your own sock sets or what have you. Next and last that I have to share with you guys for what's coming to the update is Punk Music Made Me Do It. This is a return of another spring colorway from last year. It's been a while since I've dyed this colorway and I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm going to be tweaking it next time I dye it. Not because there's anything wrong with the colorway because quite frankly I think it's absolutely gorgeous. But it's, it's not exactly the way I designed the colorway to be in this particular instance. And so I have some tweaking that I want to do next time I'm in the studio working on this colorway but you, the colors that go into this are so beautiful. So here it is. This is Punk Music Made Me Do It. The chartreuse and the pink and this tobacco color. Oh, please, it's so gorgeous. And then of course those black speckles really 
add a pretty contrast. This is Punk Music Made Me Do It on the 8020 Taylor's Favorite Bass. Kind of get in there and see that two-ply twist is really beautiful. When I say that I'm going to be kind of tweaking this, I'm doing nothing to the colors. It's more the placement of the colors, um, but not the colors themselves because I love them together. It's so beautiful. So I'll have it on Taylor's Favorite. I'll also have it on my MCN. So here it is on the MCN base. See, you can tell that there's more of like a, it's just lighter, more bright, I guess, on this yarn base. But again, because of the softness of the yarn, it's really very beautiful. And listen to the surrounding sounds. You may or may not be able to hear that, but that's my son taking a bath in the room right next door. And it's so cute. Okay, so now, I'm also going to be having my um, punk music made me do it. I'm a little distracted. Okay, so I'm also going to have punk music made me do it on DK. So here it is on the DK 100% Superwash Merino DK weight. Punk music made me do it. And then I think probably one of my favorite representations of this color is on the gilded base. It's gorgeous. There's something about the gold Stellina with the really warm tones of this colorway. So here is Punk Music Made Me Do It on Gilded. I don't know if you can see those gold Stellina fibers in there. Oh yeah, so beautiful, so beautiful. So Punk Music Made Me Do It, Pearl Jam. These two colorways will be in the shop on Friday in addition to, like I said, Peach Pit, Jewelry Box, and one new colorway. Um, those are all coming to the shop there are also going to be some mini bundles. Um, I am going to be kind of curating some more mini fiber bundles because they were very popular in the last update. I love putting them together because I love little minis. So definitely keep your eyes out for that. In addition to what's in the shop right now as we speak, lots of good stuff going on, you guys. So mark your calendars, be there at 10 so that you can get the good stuff before it's gone. I'm really excited. Keep an eye out on Instagram because I post all the updates of what's coming to the shop regularly on Instagram. I post almost every day, multiple times a day. So that kind of keeps you abreast of what's going on into the shop. Definitely sign up for the newsletter. I will send out an update newsletter right before the shop update on Friday. Just keep posted. Don't forget, Wool Needles Hands viewers get 10% off with WNH Love at checkout. Also, make sure you sign up for a customer account so that when you come back to purchase again, you don't have to put your address and payment information in again. It kind of saves it in the database. I don't have access to that information, but it's saved there for you for convenience. So keep that in mind. All right, guys, I'll see you on Friday for the shop update. All right, guys, it is just about time for me to head out and join my family before my little one goes to bed. But before I go, I want to remind you guys of a call to action that I have here at the podcast. And this is another way that, like I mentioned earlier, that I like to kind of broaden our perspective of the knitting community. It's called the local yarn store call to action. And what I ask is for you guys to go out into the wild to your local yarn stores, ask if you can take some footage, whether it be video or photos um, of the inside of your yarn shop or the people knitting of that little community that you have there in your actual space, send it into the podcast at woolneedleshands at gmail.com so that I can compile a little video to share with the viewers of the podcast and continue to expand our perspective of the knitting community that we are all a part of. So thank you so much to those of you that have submitted um, your local yarn stores. I have a couple. I'm going to be sharing one today, but please keep them coming because I love seeing all of the different places where you guys do your knitting out in your actual community. Submit them you can submit them through the woolneedleshands at gmail.com email address. I look forward to seeing your guys' local yarn stores. Thank you guys in advance. All right, guys, thank you so much for stopping by to check out episode 21 of the Wool Needles Hands podcast. It has been so nice sharing with you guys some of the things I've been working on, some of the things going on in our knitting community. I really, really love these opportunities. So thank you, thank you. Also, please don't forget to subscribe thumbs up the video. It really does a great deal to help promote the podcast, to help keep it growing. That's what keeps this thing going. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to stick around at the end of the episode. I am going to be sharing with you a local yarn store from Seville, Spain. But in the meantime, guys, I will see you next time. Stay warm, stay cozy, happy knitting. Bye!